Oh, g'day. Welcome to Farming Live Australia. Today we're going to be cleaning up some lantana and suckers. We've had a fair bit of growth in the last couple of years because we've had really good seasons and in some areas it's starting to overtake. It is something we have to do from time to time. It's just part and parcel of having the farm. The rubbish will come back, particularly the lantana. Anyway, without further ado, we'll get into it. You can see along here where these arrows are that the country has started to be overtaken with lantana and I'm starting in about the worst place, it's higher than the loader here and you'll see in the background a lot of suckers are starting to grow up as well behind where the loader is and I want to clean all that up You can start to see a bit of bare ground now and what I'm going to do is push this up as much as I can and then try and set a fire under it and get it to burn. I need to change implements to use the rake for a while. You don't have to get out of the tractor or anything to do that, it's all done from in the cab pretty easy. Once you get used to it, it's quite simple. The limbs off this old dead tree are in me road and what I'm doing is just knocking a few of them down so that they don't poke a hole through the glass of the front of the tractor or something. Anyway, that tree, because it's got all the lantana stacked around it, I'm hoping it'll add fuel to the fire and get it really burning once we get it started. I pushed all this up and finished it. Tuesday afternoon and today's Thursday afternoon and I'm going to prepare it all and try and burn it and I know that probably sounds way too green but I do have some old dead timber in it and also lantana will burn as soon as it wilts you know I don't have a lot of problem burning it when it's green you wouldn't think it would but it will here I'm just going to knock this old dead tree down with the hay forks 
and I'm going to use the hay forks like a rake and push it all up and tighten up the piles a bit before I try and light them and as it burns I'll keep pushing the fire in so it's got more fuel and, and it'll burn properly. I'm doing this in the heat of the day and there's no risk of it burning the countryside because everything's too green. But the reason I'm doing it in the heat of the day is because I want to give it the best chance to actually burn and get going. Once it's got some heat into it, it'll keep going overnight and in the morning I can push it up again and with a bit of luck get a good result. You can see how the rake's pushing it in and compressing it all tight together. It'll make it better for burning it. Here we've got another stack. I think we wound up with four stacks in all. There was a lot of grass around this one and I'm just pushing it up tight. When I came over I bought some old hay with us and we put that around the bottom of the stack in a couple of spots just to try and get the whole thing going. Pat's the fire lighting person. She loves lighting fires. She was a Queen's guide and she's never got over it. This is the first stack we lit. And as you can see, by the time we'd lit the other three stacks, it was well and truly going. Around near where we cleared up, there was some old timber. Here's a stump I pulled out, and uh, we had another tr bit of a tree, a limb that fell out of the tree. And there was all sorts of odds and sods of old timber laying about. It just seems to happen, and at the moment it's built up to a degree that we couldn't possibly use it all. It wouldn't live long enough. So I decided the stuff that was close to where I'm cleaning up, I'd burn it and get rid of it, which I know is a waste, but you've got to draw the line somewhere. I had some other limbs that had fallen out of the tree close by, so I thought I'll burn them as well. What I will do is, in the morning or when we finish the burn, whenever that is, I, I don't think it will be in the morning, but whenever that is, I'll rake the charcoal and ash and disc it into the ground. This area here, I'll probably replant this with new grass next year, coming up to December, I'd say. This is that first stack that I set on fire and it's about an hour after I set the fire or Pat set the fire and what I'm doing is pushing it all up in a heap again to keep it burning and you can see it's burned a hell of a lot of it when you do this you've got to be very careful not to stay on the hot stuff too long and burn the tyres but where I'm driving actually is bare ground because I clean it right back to bare ground with the rake as I'm pushing it in this bird's eye view probably gives you a bit better idea of what's going on and what I'm up to. I've sped the film up here so it's just not too boring. And you can see I'm just going around from stack to stack, pushing it up. And I do that about every three quarters of an hour or half an hour, whatever. And just keep the fire burning. And obviously tonight it won't get that and but it'll be hot enough in the morning to start again. Before I land the drain, I'll just show you a quick look at the rest of the farm, how nice and green it is. You know, it's unreal. I'm creating all this smoke with just these four little fires. Imagine how much must go into the atmosphere 
when they light a bushfire and do a controlled burn off in the state forest. It's the next morning now and the fires have been left overnight and as you can see the piles have greatly been reduced and it's time to push it all up and get it so that it'll burn out further. It's only about 7.30 in the morning at the moment, there's still dew on the ground but as the day heats up the fires will get a lot more intense. I'll just refresh your memory this is the same spot before we lit the fire. Again I'll push the stack up and get it as tight as I can. This stack that's here now, I stacked it around this tree which was still alive but the base of it was rotted out and I didn't think it would last the next good wind so I thought it was a good chance to get rid of it and clean it up. But it's proving to be difficult to move because it's stuck on its own stump and I've sort of got to try and manoeuvre around and get it to move. I'm still having trouble here. I can't seem to get this tree off its own stump so I thought I'll try a totally different approach. So I'd push the head around and manage to do it a lot better that way. Well, we definitely got things happening now. You'll notice that there's a limb off an old tree sticking up in the air and I tried to break them off several times but can't. I'll fix the mongrel. I'll get the old chainsaw out. Thanks Jono and Jono, you got me out of trouble here. There was three branches here sticking up in the air and they weren't going to burn. But anyway, we fixed it. Once I cut the limbs with a chainsaw, I just pushed it all up tight. And with a bit of luck, it'll burn through the day. Here we are, just doing the final bit of a push up. And that's all we've got to do this morning. Now it's just a matter of waiting until it all burns. It's in the afternoon now and this is what's left of the stacks. Of the four stacks that we started off with, we've only got three left. This is the one where I had all the trouble with the tree that was hooked on its own stump. And you can see there's not a lot of it left. This is the stack where I put that big root and limb that I got from out of the paddock earlier. This is what's left of the biggest stack where I pulled the dead tree down. I'll let it burn out over the weekend then I'll get the rake on the tractor and pull all the stacks apart and just stack them into one stack and burn the rest. Thanks a lot for watching this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.